Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and welcome to episode 9 of our DCS F-18C Hornet Academic Series. In a previous episode, we took a look at landing the Hornet on an airfield, but in this episode, we're going to take a look at what the Hornet is designed to do, and that's land on an aircraft carrier. You'll find that the principles of a VFR field landing are much the same, but there are some distinct differences that separate carrier pilots apart from all others. Let's get started. We'll start this lesson at 2,000 feet over the carrier battle group. 2,000 feet is your holding pattern over the carrier group as you prepare to land. As aircraft take off from the carrier, they'll stay at 500 feet until 10 miles from the carrier to not interfere with the holding pattern above the carrier. I have the auto throttle set about 400 knots, and now I'm going to go ahead and set the autopilot for a barometric hold at about 2,000 feet, and then I'm going to go ahead and set the attitude hold for about a 35-40 degree bank over the carrier group as I get things set up. With that done, I'll go ahead and set up the SCS page on the right DDI, the HUD on the left DDI, master arm to safe, and now I'll set up my TAC in for the carrier, which will be 55 X-ray. And here on the MPCD, I'll select TAC in, uh, zoom in a little bit, and I'll set my course line of the carrier, which is going to be due north at 0, 0, 0 degrees. With that done, I have my course on the HUD and also in the HSI. Uh, coming back down, I'll go ahead and set my radar altimeter to 40 feet for a carrier landing. And on the left side, I'll go ahead and set the anti-skid to off and hook bypass to carrier. And I'll go ahead and shut off this uh, tack hand signal. So at this point, I'll go ahead and contact mother for my approach. Uh, ATC, uh, Stennis, and inbound. Colt 1-1, one, one. inbound. Colt 1-1, one, one. flying That sounds good, so I'll go ahead and request my landing now. Colt, 1-1, one, one. request landing. That sounds good, and now I have the, uh, the off-loss or the, uh, the ball waiting for me when I approach. So I'll go ahead and get ready to enter the uh, pattern now. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage the auto throttles and disengage the uh, autopilot. What I'm doing now is going to circle up behind the carrier and go below the 2000 deck, which is called uh, breaking the deck. And it should also be noted that in the real world, a uh, case one recovery like we're doing is a zip lip with uh, no communications. And that's something we'll implement a little bit later with the open deck. And you'll probably notice up on the HUD and also the HSI, we have the uh, course arrow, which allows a, a good alignment uh, to make sure I'm in a good reciprocal heading and then the uh, correct downwind heading. Now also in the HUD you see a 2.6 STN and that just indicates that we're 2.6 miles, actually 2.7 miles from the Stennis right now. And now I'm circling uh, back behind the Stennis and they're going to be shooting for about 350 knots at 800 feet eventually. Now go ahead and uh, lower the hook. And I want to line myself up to the uh, starboard side of the Stennis. Colt 1-1, check landing gear. Wind 0-0-0, F5, meters per second. Runway 3-6. 
Okay, so lined up on the upwind, now I'm going ahead and shooting for 350 to 800 knots. And I'll take a look at the deck, make sure it's clear. Okay, so uh, carry right up with the tail, go ahead and break out, and break into the pattern, and pull. And I'll try to keep the velocity vector uh, on the horizon, look at about 2.3 G, and about 250 knots, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the gear now, and the flaps down. And I'm looking for a rollout at 180 degrees at an altitude of about 600 feet, well, at the same time, trying, trying to keep my uh, on-speed AOA of 8.1 degrees by keeping the velocity vector inside the E-bracket and also the uh, yellow circle inside the indexer lights. And I go ahead and brought the uh, uh, brake back in. So stabilizing, stabilizing, and looking pretty good here. Uh, 8.1 on-speed AOA, 610 feet on the downwind. And at this point, I'm just using the trim hat to adjust my AOA to keep nice and steady. And we'll take a look at the carrier here and looking for the round down on the stern, which looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and roll in at 30 degrees, while at the same time keeping my on-speed AOA. And what I want to do is uh, have that velocity vector just below the horizon line. And the tricky part here is just using nice throttle adjustments and trim adjustments to keep the on-speed AOA. Uh, right where it needs to be throughout the turn. And about uh, halfway through the turn at the 90 degrees, it should be up 450 feet, a little high. And keep bringing it over, keeping my uh, bank angle right where it needs to be. Adjusting throttle. Getting a little slow. Bringing her in. Okay, I'm gonna roll her out now. It should be about 10 seconds in the groove. And I go ahead and uh, uncaged. And now I got the, uh, the ball in sight and adjusting my throttle based on the ball position. Looking good. Nice centered ball. Nice centered ball. Nice centered. A little low, a little low. And we're down. Eh, probably not an okay landing, probably just a fair one. But let's go ahead and uh, raise the hook and fold the wings. And flaps up to auto. And let's go ahead and uh, exit the landing area. So uh, that's a little look at a Case 1 carrier landing in the Hornet. I very much hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.